Okay, so today we are diving into collaboration, and we've got a great mix of sources for this deep dive. An interview with Michael Lewis, you know him, Moneyball, the big short, and a really interesting scientific article on, well, the science of collaboration. It's really amazing how well they complement each other. I bet. I love a good story, and Lewis, he always knows how to tell one. In this interview, he talks about his book, The Undoing Project, about this fascinating partnership. Two Israeli psychologists, Danny Kahneman and Amos Tversky. Now, these two were total opposites personality-wise, but together, their work was groundbreaking. Lewis even calls their bond a love story, which, knowing Lewis, that's really saying something. Yeah, and that difference is so important. It really gets at the heart of creativity. You need those different minds coming together yeah. to clash and spark something new. So true. And Lewis makes that so clear when he describes their offices. They're like, night and day, Traversky was all about order, like a minimalist. One pencil, a single sheet of paper, and then there's Kahneman's office. Mm. Total chaos. Papers everywhere. His secretary even tied his scissors to his desk so he wouldn't lose them. You can't make this stuff up. But that's what made their collaboration so great. They challenged each other without even trying, just by being themselves. You've got to get out of your comfort zone sometimes to make those breakthroughs. But before we go too far, why is all of this important? I mean, this wasn't just some academic exercise. The work of Kahneman and, and Tversky. Right. Their work has had a huge impact on how we make decisions, yeah. understand risk, <laughs> even just how we interact with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. One of their biggest discoveries was how our brains are wired to take shortcuts especially when we're uncertain about something. So we crave certainty when things are uncertain. Exactly. We rely on these mental shortcuts, mm -hmm. often without even realizing it. I mean, sometimes you have to go with your gut when you have to make a quick decision. But I can see how these shortcuts could be a problem, too. Exactly. And they are a problem sometimes. Kahneman and Tversky called them cognitive biases. And they can really lead us down some strange paths. Give me an example. One of the most common biases the representativeness heuristic. Basically, our brains, we love to categorize, mm -hmm. and we tend to judge how likely something is to happen based on how well it fits into those categories, even if our categories are totally wrong. Like judging a book by its cover. Exactly. Or how about this? Judging a basketball player by how well he fits the star athlete mold. Perfect example. And Lewis actually talks about this in his book. He tells this great story about Jeremy Lin. The oh, basketball player. Well. Now, that was a story. But for those who haven't heard of him, Jeremy Lin was this amazing basketball player, but he was always overlooked. And Lewis says it's because he didn't fit the stereotype of a star athlete. Which is so frustrating. I mean, we've all been there, judged too quickly, yeah. underestimated, all because we don't fit some expectation. And that's why Lin's story is such a powerful example. It shows what can happen when we let these cognitive biases affect our thinking. Okay. So we've got these biases mm -hmm. and they're messing with our judgment. Can we fix it? Can we rewire our brains to be more objective? It's not really about rewiring our brains. Yeah. It's more about being aware of those biases, mm -hmm. recognizing when they might be affecting our judgment. So how do we do that? Well, that's where collaboration comes in. Having someone else there to challenge your assumptions can help you see those blind spots. And that's where the scientific article comes in, the one about creativity. Exactly. And it turns out it's not about working alone. Really? Yeah. They actually looked at scientific citations and different patterns of collaboration. And guess what? What? Pairs were the sweet spot. So having a thought partner makes you more creative. You're creative. Wow. I never would have thought of that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They found that smaller groups, yeah, like two or three people, they're the ones doing the most groundbreaking work. That's so interesting. But why pairs? Well, I think it's the focus, mm. but also the freedom. You're not as worried about impressing anyone. And you can get into that flow state. That flow state. Exactly. When you get so into something, you lose track of time. Exactly. It's the best. And with a partner, you're accountable to each other. It's like iron sharpens iron. Yes. You push each other to be better. And there's actually a neurological basis for this too. Remember how we were talking about language? and how it structures our thoughts. Yeah. Well, when you explain something out loud, it activates Broca's area, the language part of your brain, okay. but it also plays a role in problem solving and planning. So talking it out makes oh. you more creative. Mm. In a way. Yeah. Because you're activating the right parts of your brain. Mm -hmm. And a partner gives you that instant feedback. They can challenge your assumptions, point out what you're missing, help you make connections you wouldn't have made on your own. It's like having another set of eyes on the problem. Exactly. Like a fresh perspective. Because sometimes when you're too close to something, 
You just can't see it clearly. Exactly. And that reminds me of something else Lewis talked about, Kahneman and Tversky. They were really into thought experiments, just bouncing ideas off each other. No matter how crazy those ideas were. No matter how crazy. It's like that improv game. Yes, and. Exactly. You just keep building on each other's ideas. Because you never know where it might lead. And the article talked about that too, that idea of psychological safety. Feeling like you can take risks, even if it means sounding a little foolish. Yeah, you have to feel safe to do that. And that's easier to do one-on-one. -on -one. Because you really feel like you can be yourself. Exactly. And that's when the really great ideas come out. It makes you realize how important those interactions are, just bouncing ideas off someone. Yeah. And suddenly something clicks. It's not always those big aha moments, though, is it? Sometimes it's more gradual, just back and forth, challenging each other until you get to something new. It's like you're on a journey together. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be work-related either, does it? This idea of a thinking partner. Absolutely not. It could be anyone, a colleague, a friend, even a family member. Someone who gets you thinking. Someone who you trust. Right. Someone who challenges you, but in a good way. So how do we find these thinking partners? Well, first of all, don't be afraid to look outside your usual circles. That's a good point. Sometimes the best collaborations come from the most unexpected places. So true. And don't be afraid to be the one to reach out. You know, just say, hey, I really value your opinion. Mm -hmm. Would you be open to brainstorming sometime? I love that. Simple but effective. Yeah. And once you've found your thinking partner, how do you make it work? How do you make sure it's a good experience for both of you? Well, I think the most important thing is psychological safety. Making sure you both feel comfortable. Sharing your ideas. Yes. Even if they're not fully formed. No dumb questions. Exactly. You have to trust each other. And you have to be a good listener. Really listen to what the other person is saying. Because you never know where it might lead. Exactly. Wow. This has been so interesting. I feel like I have a whole new perspective on collaboration. So for our listeners, those of you who are ready to find your thinking partner, any final words of advice? Don't overthink it. Just start somewhere. Reach out to someone you admire and see what happens. And on that note, we'll leave you with this. What if those things that make you different, your unique perspective, your experiences, even your quirks, what if those are the keys to a truly great collaboration? Something to think about.